The appeal of the Panther character, I think, is because he's He's uh, so promiscuous and and fun-loving, you know, devilish. He's always he's a prankster. Everybody has different ideas on what the Pink Panther is. We all have our individual feelings about it. I think he's adorable. I mean, he's like a house pet. The key to the Pink Panther is simplicity and identification. And there's something else that goes along with it too and that sophistication. It all started when Frizz and I were working for the Warner Brothers Cartoon Division. Well, it was Isidore Freeling, and somewhere in the annals of early Warner Brothers animation, there was an animated character by the name of Senator Frisbee. Because of his involvement with this character, all of his cronies at Warner Brothers started to call him Frizz. Frizz Freeling was literally a genius in his own right. I don't think there's anyone that I've ever seen that understood the timing element of, of, of cartooning. In other words, how to pull off a gag the best way possible. He had a sense of timing that Nobody else that I ever worked with could come near. One day I got a call from the New York office saying, get on a plane and get back here. They told me the decision had been made to stop the production of cartoons. Got home, started to think about it, and decided that I wanted to have my own business. I had to have a, an animation director. So I approached Frizz and I said, after all this Warner thing is over with, would you like to go into business? Let's form our own company. Frizz and I did indeed go into business together as DePatty Freeling Enterprises. We got along on a diet of television commercials, mainly for you know the first few months of our existence. Then my life changed. One day the telephone rang and it was Blake Edwards. I uh, went over to his office and he handed me this script called The Pink Panther. He said, I want you to design for me a Pink Panther character. Like everything else, you don't know the genesis, really the genesis. One of us suggested that we actually bring the panther to life. It most likely was either me or my uncle, who was uh, an associate producer, an executive producer on that, Owen Crump, uh, who uh, had a career at Warner Brothers and was very close to David DePatty and Frizz Freeling. Once it was mentioned, then I can remember constantly sending telegrams back and forth about how I saw the character. Uh, made up a background for the character. So Frizz and I went back to the shop and got some of our top uh, designers together. And we came up probably a week later with, I'd say a hundred or more different variations on what a Pink Panther would look like. So we hauled all these over to Blake's house one Sunday afternoon and laid them out on his living room floor, and he walked around and looked. And Blake is a very decisive guy. And what he did was, he went over and he pointed to this one. He says, that's the one I want. The character was born. Probably more than anyone else, including Frizz and myself, Polly Pratt, made the major contribution to the Pink Panther because it was Holly's design that Blake picked that day. 
all he did with the character was he put it on his production letterhead and I think on business cards and that type of thing. And that was it. I'd say three months went by and uh, I got a telephone call again. Blake says, come on over. He says, David, I have the film in the can now and I know exactly what I want to do with this character. I want you guys to create an opening title sequence, a main title sequence featuring the Panther. And when we heard that Pink Panther theme, uh, it complemented so beautifully the action. We take the picture out to preview. After the main title sequence is over with, they had to turn on the lights and shut off the projector. People were jumping up and down in the aisles and applauding and just, it was screaming and yelling. I've never seen such a reaction. To this very day, I, I think the, the, the main title is, is really an extraordinary couple of minutes of film. After that screening, um, I started to think, you know, there may be life after the main title. This character may have a place in animation. Well, I discussed it with my partner, Friz Freeling, and he wasn't too happy about it. He said, you know, this is a one shot. Well, I said, Friz, I, I really don't agree with you, and I'm going to see what I can do. And I went in to see Harold Mirisch. I said, Harold, I think that we've got something pretty special here. Uh, I'd like to be able to make a theatrical cartoon. After the, the release of the picture and its great success, uh, we decided that we should go into the cartoon business. <laughs> and so we, uh, we managed to convince United Artists. Anyway, about a week later, he calls me back and he says, UA wants to give you a contract for 156 cartoon shorts. You think you can handle that kind of assignment? I took a deep breath and I said, well, let me get back to you. So I went back to the studio and I told Fritz <laughs> what had happened. And Fritz said, I don't believe it. I said, believe me, it's there. But I said, Fritz, we have one problem that I want to discuss with you. You and I have always worked for somebody. We've never owned anything in our life. And we didn't go into business to continue that. I said, I'm going to go back to Harold Mirisch and I'm going to tell him that I want our company to own 25% of the copyright. He says, you'll never get it. You'll never get it. So I went back to see Harold and, you know, I'm, I'm just a kid at this point in my career and I'm scared to death of studio executives. He goes, Arr! he says, I'll talk to you later, out. A week later or so, the Mirish lawyers call me in, here's the contract, 156 shorts and 25% of the copyright for De Patty Freeling. We created a group including ourselves and Blake and De Patty Freeling that uh, produced the first cartoon which was entitled The Pink Fink. The Pink Fink was the first in the series of the theatrical cartoons that we made and we were very, very fortunate that year in 1964 to win the Academy Award for it. Immediately then uh, began a, a program of producing uh, uh, six-minute uh, Pink Panther cartoons at the rate of one a month, which United Artists distributed. As time went on, we, we made more of them. He, he finally appeared on Saturday morning television. Other uh, shows developed from that. We had a tremendous following immediately in Europe for the character. And I mean, uh, to this day, the Italians love and adore him, very closely followed by the French, and a big, big calling in Germany. I had no idea. That, uh, that character would take, I thought it was just fine for the film, but I had no idea that it would take off like that, and that it would have that kind of a life of its own, that kind of a merchandising life of its own. Thank God it did.